Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guests have seen tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people healed all over the world. And he said he has found, when he shows specific videos of people being physically healed, it increases the expectancy and more people get healed. I mean, just the most outrageous miracles. Anyone interested in seeing this video? Yeah. Me too. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. When people see this video, Tell them what has happened and what you expect to happen. All right. I believe that out of the million families or households that has the opportunity to watch this in the next week, that however many watch, one at least one tenth of you are going to receive a healing during this program today. Not a year or not a month, not a day afterwards, but even today. People get healed without, before there's a prayer, and then more get healed when there is a prayer. So I believe as you watch this video and you see what God has done, it will create faith in you, and, uh, it, and there will be a sovereign visitation, and there's going to be a lot of people get healed watching the video as well today, even in our audience here. There is no sign of any lump. It's gone, and she's completely healed. Randy was saying, believe in miracles, believe in miracles. She felt she needed to go to the bathroom. She went to the restroom, and she said she didn't even have time to, to go to the toilet. The stones just went through. It's been so... the, he lost his uh, hearing 100% in both ears, and the doctor said, my case is irreversible. There is no way to heal this. But I believe in Jesus Christ. I didn't, I didn't believe in what they said. I believe that he would do this miracle for me. He said, Can, do you realize this? I'm talking to you both, and I'm not wearing the hearing aids. This woman has, from the knee down to here, a bar and 12 screws. She has to walk of crutches all the time. She, hey, Randy, she couldn't bend her she knee. She could not bend her <laughs> knee. I knew today wasn't going to be my day. I want to run. I want to run. I want to run. The doctor said, you're not going to be healed. You're going to have to amputate your leg if you still, if the nothing changes. When we first started praying, it's like instantly, within five seconds, power hits her leg. And now look what he can do. He can bend his knee, do all that, and raise his hand. Hallelujah. Totally healed. 31 screws. Totally healed. Hallelujah. What a deal. And 16 screws inserted on her back. 16 screws. She could not bend, and she had uh, constant pain. All the pain is gone, and now she can do the movement she couldn't do before. Hallelujah. Glória a Deus. Deus abençoe. Eight screws and two metal bars on his neck. And I couldn't do this. Four screws and two metal bars. appreciate what God has done that you've just seen before your very eyes. I mean, people that have metal inserted in their body cannot bend. You realize metal, you can't bend the metal in your back and in your neck. But we've had 5,000, almost, almost 5,800 
uh, people who reported their healings uh, since uh, 2009. This is of metal? Of just the metal That's issues, what? yes. Uh, now, according to my understanding of the Greek and the New Testament, there are gifts, the word is plural, of healings, mm -hmm. plural. And some people have great, like uh, uh, you have uh, great anointing for this, but there was something that was bothering you. After 30 years of praying, you didn't see one person healed of a stroke. So he, he goes to see a person that's been a guest on our show, Heidi Baker in Mozambique, and he saw something that even at this point in his walk with God stretched his faith. What did you see? Well, I saw people, several people, who had been raised from the dead. I met the people who prayed for them to be raised from the dead, and I visited the villages that uh, so many had come to Christ, even in Muslim villages, because of this, these dead resurrections. And so that changed my perspective when I was praying then for people with stroke, because if you've been dead, and a lot of them had been dead for hours, he has to rebuild the whole brain, matter of fact, the whole body, all the cellular mm. structure. So the possibility of strokes being healed uh, just encouraged my faith. And then we saw three in uh, 24 hours. Tell me one of the three that you saw. Tell well, me about one. It, I want to, it's actually two. A man and a woman got the same thing. Paralyzed on the left side, claw hand, but the woman can't speak. It affected her speech. And she was Catholic, but she had come to this Pentecostal meeting. The other guy wasn't even a Christian. He had come. And uh, uh, we prayed for an hour before the service started and during the worship for about 45 minutes, my team and I. And both of them, right before I started to preach, the worship was still going on. I looked out, and there was the man weeping, his hand no longer a claw, clapping, and the woman in the back with her little uh, veil on, uh, clapping and singing, and both of them in the same night had been healed of strokes, and they were paralyzed on the left side. We've seen uh, two people healed of uh, very bad schizophrenia. Uh, we have seen people with bipolar. We've seen people with Parkinson's. We've seen people with MS, all dealing with the brain, uh, get healed. So I think it will be more than just stroke. Uh, there, there's something that I have to ask you, and that is people sometimes they'll feel a fire of God on them. Sometimes they'll shake, and then they'll be healed. Does someone have to feel anything to be healed? 30, 40 percent of the people we pray for don't feel anything that get healed, and they don't know they're healed until they try to do what they can't do, which, when it comes to the metal issue, 100 percent of the people that I studied, they were healed when they tried to do what they couldn't, not before. So there is a faith element involved. Yes. Yeah, and I just want to encourage the, uh, the people who are watching to during the show, at the end of the show, to try to do what they can. And just don't try one or two times. Take at least half a minute to a minute to continue. Uh, because the Lord actually said that there is something about not being passive, being active. And, and you're finding that uh, uh, now, when you speak it out, some people are getting healed before you even pray. Yes. Yeah, that, that's Give started. me an example. Well, I was uh, in Brazil a few weeks ago. And I was speaking, and uh, I got hit right here, like somebody with a little hammer and hit me. It hurt so bad. In the, while I'm speaking, I go, ow! Well, I knew that was, somebody's going to get healed of that. Before I could even say somebody's going to get healed of it, the person who saw me do that had that condition. If he did his hand like the pastor told me, if he did his wrist, he, there's a big scar across here, motorcycle wreck, pins, plates. And when he'd do that, a pin would stick up. You could see it. The pastor said it actually looks like kind of sick. It, it, it totally healed. And there's nothing there now. You can do that. Nothing sticks up. No prayer. He just he got healed. As soon as I said it, he got healed. Yeah, I, I think that's worth a call. Oh, we were talking about the manifestation thing. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the person with AIDS. Uh, this happened in the United States, in uh, Inglewood, Florida. A guy had... Uh, uh, he, was, he had AIDS, and he was in hospice, a few weeks to live, in a wheelchair, a patch, oh seen double. Uh, yes, it was my first time to this church, and I prayed. And I prayed for him. 
He didn't feel a thing. Jesus. And when I finished interviewing, there was no change. He didn't feel anything. But when I went back about 10 months later, this do guy came up to me and said, do you remember, do you remember the guy you prayed for and had AIDS? I said, yeah, yeah what happened to, him? happened to him? He said, that was me. That was me. Because, <laughs> you know, he was, he, he looked so different. And uh, he told me he didn't feel a thing. He wasn't any better. Wasn't any better the next day or the next day. But on the third morning, he woke up feeling stronger and just continued to get better and went back and he's totally healed of AIDS and had several children after that. <laughs> I'm so excited, Randy, that you want to clear the rubble that you've probably learned the hard way, too. For instance, you came from a background that believed that uh, miracles didn't even exist today. T uh, tell me what's wrong with that thinking. Well, it's not biblical. Well, that's a good answer. <laughs> uh, scripture actually teaches against that. Uh, you know, some of the rubble that I felt like it needed to be removed. One is that the gifts of healing and miracles uh, is not for today. That's one. This is some Paul's thorn of flesh, you know. Uh, that wasn't sickness or disease. That was, uh, there's only three times that thorns in the flesh, the eyes and side, is mentioned in the Old Testament. Paul would have known that. And every time it was never sickness. I think also sickness is your cross to bear. And if you think God gave you the sickness, it's hard to believe he wants to ask him to take it away. If you think and, and, and if you think you. God gave you sickness, why in the world would you go to a doctor to get better, right. to get aware totally of a gift God's given you? Right, yeah. Totally inconsistent. So that's just, there are there, many, There's all the rubble. And the a rubble, lot of rubble. You explained yeah. to me where you got that word rubble from. Uh, I, I was going to preach at a charismatic Lutheran meeting for the uh, international, and the Lord said, don't preach anything you've ever taught. Teach about Nehemiah and Zerubbabel going back and rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. But before they could rebuild the wall, they had to remove the rubble. And, uh, and then when I wrote the book, um, uh, Healing Breakthrough, I knew that would be the first half of the book. But it's not enough to remove the rubble. You still got to build the wall of faith. And so it's teachings and practices in both that actually contribute to an atmosphere of faith uh, not in a magical way, but just understanding the ways of God. When we understand the ways of God, it, Moses said, if I found favor in your sight, show me your way or teach me your ways that I may know you. We know God better when we understand his ways because we'll recognize his footprints when sometimes we wouldn't see them or his thumbprints if we don't understand his ways. In the same chapter, he says, now show me your glory. I believe, Sid, there's a connection between seeing the glory and when the one, number one way God glorifies His name is by what He does. So we want to see His ways so that we may see His glory. I agree. And what we, how do we create an atmosphere for miracles? Well, when I, when I wrote Healing Breakthrough, I thought, what, are, what do I do in the meetings? Why do I do those things? And what's the, the reason behind it? Sanctified reason, not reason that's controlled by the, what we think is possible, but we know when it, everything's possible. And then I tried to write those things in my understanding. Faith is created when we recognize what God is doing in the meeting and are able to communicate that. What He's, once we know it's His will in that meeting to do those special things, it's like He's priming the pump. And once the water of, starts to flow and people start to see the miracles taking place, then other people start having faith just by because of what they're seeing God do. And so usually he will, re he will show us things by words of knowledge or understandings uh, or a testimony, uh, just as we showed the video. The woman who, the power is making her move, she had watched that video of the guy, it was about 14 people had uh, metal in her body, and she felt heat come on her knee and leg. So she was, God was creating faith in her. And so by the testimony and by words of knowledge and by seeing what God's doing in a meeting and, and sometimes feeling his presence. Some people feel heat. They, they actually do. Not, not, not everybody. Or they feel energy coming into their body. Or they begin to feel all of a sudden, my pain's leaving. That encourages their faith, especially if they know that that's a sign of healing. Randy, I'm going to tell everyone what's going to happen when we come back. I'm going to turn Randy loose, more importantly, the Holy Spirit loose, and in your homes and in the studio audience, 
I am expecting amazing miracles, and I keep seeing the teeth being healed. Be right back. <laughs> Randy, you, you said it's vital for us to know that healing belongs to us. What did you mean? Well, I believe that healing and deliverance is the children's bread. It belongs to the covenant people particularly, but God will also heal even people who are not Christian as one of the ways he evangelizes, and he's a great evangelist. It's, it's the children's bread, but it's also in the cross the same words that is used for bore our sickness and diseases was used to bear our sins and our iniquities. Exact same words. So at the cross, he took not only our sin and our iniquities, but our sickness, our pains. Uh, Septuagint says our the diseases. And so I want him to know that healing is yours. And it's not only is healing yours, but the, the ministry of healing is yours as well. It's in the Great Commission. We're to teach you to obey everything Jesus commanded the disciples, and healing and deliverance was, was at the top. So I, I actually believe right now God wants to do some healing in here and uh, uh, those that's watching. Uh, before I came in uh, a while ago, my right kneecap hurt so bad I could barely walk. There's nothing wrong with my kneecap. It's one of the seven ways you can get a word of knowledge. And uh, usually when they hurt that bad, it's uh, something big. So I don't know if it's someone here that has a problem in the right uh, kneecap or if it's somebody that's going to be watching, but it's going to be a, um, either a lot of people or it's something very, very big. So I believe that Lord's going to heal that. I was talking to my intern who's here. Brian over there is 25 years old. Uh, he felt like God was going to heal somebody that has something wrong with their neck. And I feel like that uh, there's going to be some people healed that has even an issue of, of metal uh, and of surgery uh, in the neck. Uh, I, and for, for as that goes, I just feel like every time we do a meeting, we just go for metal and uh, several other things. Right lately, we've been seeing uh, five out of the last six women we prayed for who had psoriatic arthritis were healed. So I've, if you have those that's watching, if you have, and those that's here watching, if you have uh, any of those things, or you feel the heat of God come on you, or the power of God beginning to go through you, and as I said with Sid a while ago, you don't have to feel that to be healed, and a lot of the people don't know they're healed until they try to do something they cannot do. So I'm going to ask if any of those things apply to you, for you to stand right now, and begin and, and to do home, something. By the way, you yes. stand. You're not. You're yep. not Swiss cheese. You stand at home. I'm looking at you. More yeah. important, God's looking at you. Yeah. And I. I, I want you. I want to give Excuse you. Excuse like, me. Add stroke. We talked about yes, that earlier. Yes. We talked about strokes. Anything dealing with the brain. MS, Parkinson's, uh, mental illness, stroke. Uh, uh, learning disabilities. Whatever it may be. Do severe. you have much results with cancer? Yes, we've seen s uh, several people healed of fourth stage cancer. Um, so, you know, whatever it is that you have. Uh, Let's but stand I am, up right I am going to ask that you try to do something that you can't do, that you actually do something, test it out, and at home, you do the same in your living room, uh, wherever you're watching the uh, TV and, and let me add one more thing, because every time I minister, this happens. If you have a pain in your neck, or back, you better stand up unless you want to end up being a pain in the neck. No. <laughs> yeah, and even as you were saying, I just felt somebody's got pain. It's on above the left ear in the head, and it starts be right behind the ear and kind of goes through the head. Um, so now check out your body. If you Now, we're not asking if you're 100% yet because we only had a few. It hasn't even been a couple of minutes. But if you're at least 80% uh, improvement, or function restored, I want you to wave both hands over your head to your wrist cross like this. There's one, keep, keep two, waving them. three, four, five. Just, just stand and, and wave if that's you. There's uh, five people already. Now, if you're not at least 80%, but you're getting better, you're improving. Wait, would you wave one hand at me? Okay, now I'm going to pray. We haven't prayed yet. 
<laughs> Father, in G I just wanted you to see God heal people before we I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the ones that you are healing. They're at least 80% or more. But these, Father, the last ones that just rate one hand, uh, we're praying and agreeing and saying amen to what you're doing. And in the name of Jesus, we speak to their pain and we invite the power of your kingdom to come. The gospel of your kingdom, the power of your kingdom, establish your reign over sickness and problems. We thank you for your miracles, miracle power. I command pain to leave, conditions to be healed, the, the, the energy of God to go through your body for the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Now, check it out again. All you watching it, uh, whenever you're watching, whatever you're watching, whatever room you're in, check it out. Hey, Those who waved one hand, now if you're at least 80%, and you couldn't wave your hands a while ago, but now you can wave them high over your head. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, we ha I just believe that I actually believe because we've seen God do this. Not only will there be people healed, said the first time you run this, but there'll be people get healed in the in the reruns. Oh, I'm it sure. It doesn't make that. it. It could be a year from now. This thing's being shown, and God will use the word and use the testimony and bring healing. Okay, one last word. Uh, pain in the hip area. You're being healed, or even a new hip. You 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 just you just stand up and walk around a little bit, and you'll see it's gone. Now the healer. It's not Randy Clark, and yeah. it's not me. The healer is Jesus, yes. and in Hebrew, Yeshua. Yes. <laughs> Next week on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth. I want you to join me on It's Supernatural with my special guests, Dr. Michael Brown and Dr. Sandra Kennedy, as we share one of the greatest ways to be mentored in the supernatural, and I'm telling you, this is so spectacular. You can't miss this show. If you do, you may miss 45 years of what I've been taught in my guests on The Supernatural.